Hello everyone, it's me, Jules Chen again. So what's up? Sorry for the lack of reaction theater this week. I've just been going through a few things lately, which is what I will be getting into in a second, but reaction theater and other non-podcast and or vlog projects are going to be put on hold on hiatus for roughly about three weeks. Long story short, I've just been very exhausted. This summer has been very tiresome for me between my part-time job, which has been running me ragged, going to a con, taking care of my family since my mom got laid off a few weeks, a months ago, uh, paying bills and helping out with Aaron among other issues that have been having me split my hairs, it's become very difficult to produce content on a weekly basis. In addition, my last reaction theater, which covered the first episode of Voltron, got a copyright takedown notice, and it resulted in a copyright strike. Now, I'm not going to be... I'm not bummed about the strike. It will wear off in November. However, I worked so hard on that Voltron video. It's like 18 minutes long. However, I didn't want to give up, so I posted the video on my Facebook page. Click, in the, click the link in the description below to check it out and thankfully it's safer there i mean facebook has its own copyright system but it's not as vicious as youtube ironically speaking of facebook because i want to keep making voltron videos i've decided to put them all on facebook instead of youtube probably putting them there on fridays here's the here's the reason despite my many many criticisms of the show i like it even though I have criticisms of it, and I want to keep making videos about Voltron and sharing them with everyone. However, I need to play it safe and upload them onto a platform that is safer than YouTube. So look, uh, so look forward to that, and hopefully it'll be an incentive for you all to check out my Facebook page where I make most of my announcements like delays, new content, and other developments. So yes, please click the link in the, uh, to my Facebook page in the description below. Give me a like and a follow. This hiatus will also be giving me time to work on other projects I've been meaning to work on for a while, like more topic videos, such as my next topic video that I have planned regarding diversity and representation, as well as a monthly roundup for comics that I've read and series that I've watched for that month and other content that I hope I can produce in a timely manner and without drowning myself in Jack Daniels whiskey. In uh, other news... Uh, I recently got my first drawing tablet, and as a <laughs> as a uh, art miner, I can dare say that my experience has been um, my learning experience has been very interesting, and I think I'm getting the hang of it. I do have some plans with this tablet. It'll also give me the chance to make my own art assets. Uh, so I won't have to bug uh, Vincent all the time. I'll mostly be calling Vincent on uh, more complicated stuff, like with more vectors, like my up, like my updated uh, video avatar. So look forward to that. Don't worry, Vincent uh, will not be out of the job. He will still be my artist. And if you would like to see more art from Vincent, you know, then maybe consider visiting him, or maybe even consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. So that way, I can, you know, have Vincent's artwork be featured on the show more often. As for War of Infinite Pan and movie corner vlogs they'll be coming out in an unscheduled fashion as usual with when the situation presents itself and whenever we have something to talk about now on to the nitty-gritty of this video and it's it's something I feel like I need to talk about going uh, before I go on a hiatus uh, for those of you who haven't seen season 7 of Voltron Legendary Defenders on Netflix I advise that you click out of this video now that you leave this is this is a spoiler warning. Please leave if you have not seen the season yet. Thanks for listening. Please give my Facebook page a like and a follow. For those of you still here, I feel like I need to make this abundantly clear. Lean in close and press down your headphones onto your skulls if you have to in order for this message to get across. I firmly believe that diversity and representation of people of color, gen uh, uh, women, LGBT, and other groups are very important and are ultimately a good thing. Diversity is very much a good thing to have and is very much needed, no matter what the crazy, opportunistic, uh, dog whistle blowing, conservative, joyless, knob sack gatekeepers want to say. I disregard and frown upon the usage of phrases like forced diversity or pandering to the gay fans or pandering to the liberal agenda because people who use those stock phrases like that have no idea what they're talking about. The, the LGBT community, like many other groups, have been starving for suitable, satisfying, and long overdue representation for years and it's such a well- it's such a well of untapped potential and creative ideas. Furthermore, even though I just got into this Voltron series a few weeks ago, I can dare say I love Shiro. 
almost as much as I love Garnet, and by extension Ruby and Sapphire from Steven Universe. He's practically one of my favorite characters because he's so level-headed, encouraging, decisive, and such a dad. Uh, but, uh, almost, I, I almost, it's almost as if he's like Garnet to a degree. Hmm, when you think about it. So, Shiro, rev so, for those... I'm very sure you all know, Shiro was revealed to be gay, and it's a nice addition to the small list of LGBT characters in cartoons. However, it's not the best addition. Let me just say that again. Uh, Shiro revealed to be gay is a nice addition to this still small list of LGBT characters in cartoons. But again, it's not the best. I shouldn't really have to say... I should really be saving this for my diversity and representations video, but long story short, that this is... This is... That as much as this new development for one of my newly favorite characters is, as nice as it is, it's not satisfying given how the creators of the show implemented it. Because a good idea with good intentions, yes. However, the execution was very unsatisfying at best and frustrating at worst. I, should need, I shouldn't even need to explain since I'm very sure all of you, those who are still here, have seen Season 7, so you know what I'm talking about. So this will save me some time. I'm confident that the creators of the fan, uh, the creators knew the creators of the show knew that the fandom would be stoked to hear that Shiro is confirmed gay, seeing as how he's a crowd favorite on par with everyone else. And this is not the first time this particular creative team have done this before. Remember Korra and Asami, which makes this all the more frustrating and infuriating that the creators of the show rallied their fans with excitement, boasted about how progressive they are, and expected praise after delivering something so lackluster, I'm sorry. How is this lackluster? How is this problematic? I mentioned that there was a small list of LGBT characters in cartoons, or even in a lot of other mediums, no matter how your uncontrolled headcanons may be or indicate. The LGBT community is still struggling with, re with representation in media, and this is how you want to take a step forward by killing off Shiro's boyfriend with dialogue that isn't definitive and only hints that what their relationship could be? For all you know, they could just be close friends or roommates. That's not definitive. Heck, ev not even an I love you from Shiro as he looks on Adam's plaque and uh, discovering that he's dead and apologizing for their supposed breakup? Again, it's just suggestive. It's not definitive. That's not good writing or representation. It's waffling tiptoeing around the idea that they're in a gay relationship, but only giving hints. That's all. That's all they're doing. It's not good enough. I'm not saying that... I'm not saying make out on the coffee table, but probably something more substantial than just a few hints. That's why a lot of people don't view Korasami as a masterpiece of representation. It's underwhelming, and going by hints at at a relationship, and the word of God by the creators is not enough. Show us the LGBT representation, not tell us that it's there. That's that's just not how you do, that's not enough. And no, the subtext, subtext does not work here, Peridot. And it's frustrating seeing creators say that they're all for gay representation and how progressive they are and how they fully support it, but don't commit to the idea of said representation and chicken out act and act surprised that they that they are met with a hailstorm of criticism, that they are receiving a backlash of this magnitude. LeFou from the live action Beauty of the Beauty and the Beast was egregious because the creators were so proud to announce that it of how much of a big step forward it was for LGBT representation, but we got LeFou just gazing into some guy's eyes for a few seconds. That's all we got. And everyone was like, that was it? And the production team was rightfully eviscerated. The Power Rangers movie wasn't chewed out as much, but Trini revealing to be gay it was barely a blip and wasn't worth mentioning to be honest and didn't really add that much to her character. And the crew is still went on announcing it with undeserved amounts of smug satisfaction. I and many others are very tired of seeing this weak-handed attempt at diversity by creators who say they're all for it, but 
but but fail to deliver in any meaningful way. This is the equivalent of wanting to swim or take swimming seriously, but instead just dipping your toes into the shallow end of the pool and yelling, "Oh, I did it!" and then expecting people to lavish you with praise like you're Tom Daly or something. As a war story, it's okay. It's not. I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. Even superhero stories caution about being in a relationship, whether it be with another hero or not. And the and the hero doesn't always have a happy ending. See Spider-Man, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Two. There is tragedy even with being a hero. But for but as an LGBT representation, but as re LGBT representation goes, do I need to explain the shallow end of the pool example again? Uh, the praise the Voltron team, uh, the the praise the Voltron crew want and got is so undeserved. Shiro Shiro's story isn't as bad as the other examples that I have mentioned. And since I've heard that next season, whenever that's going to happen, will most likely explore how much of an impact Adam has made on Shiro's life. So there's some potential to remedy this, but by not waffling or like what they did here with this season but i fear that's what the voltron team's gonna do just choose the lazy route and just waffle around it and the show creators have no excuse when freaking steven universe of all things just had a gay wedding not too long ago and since ruby was in a dress i'm very sure that the foreign dubs won't be able to weasel their way out of that unless they choose not to play that episode i also have a lot of problems with Steven Universe, sure, but my point still stands. When your competition, which is on a mainstream public TV network, does a better job at LGBT representation than you, and you are on a platform with a greater sense of freedom, and you can show actual death, even, you have no excuse for your lack of commitment to how supposedly progressive and supportive you are. And even then, Steven Universe has problems with how weak handed their LGBT representation can be sometimes. But at least they're tr they, they commit to it a lot better than the Voltron team, and that just makes it even more frustrating. Another issue worth noting uh, as to another issue worth noting, and why this is so problematic as representation is that the story contributes to the idea that in order to be taken seriously that this is another example of in order to be taken seriously you need your show your movie or whatever needs to be dark and brooding all the time Th that it's not just a story about kids and mech suits i've mentioned this problem in regards to that god awful titans trailer i have always been against that notion that dark brooding stories equals good or that they're better than light-hearted happy stories see how the marvel movies have walked circles around dc's pitiful attempts at movies and it's safe to say that the sh that shiro it's safe to say that shiro despite his positive confident and level-headed attitude he has been through a lot of crap he had a degenerative disease broke up with his boyfriend got abducted by the galra had a fight had to fight for his survival for a, over a year, had his arm replaced, couldn't trust his own memories, got mind controlled, nearly killed his friends, and nearly died. Oh yeah, the clone body also had a good chance of rejecting his consciousness, so he could very much have died. And on top of all the other things he has to go through, and on top of, uh, on top of that, he has to deal with a bunch of kids and be the grown-up most of the time, which is... which has earned him the title of space daddy by the way this man this wonderful man has been put through the ringer so so much give this wonderful man a break come on stop being mean to him this is exhausting so exhausting i almost feel for adam when you have mostly angsty broody moments nothing really stands out and left and it's leaving you emotionally drained i haven't been this exhausted since kingdom hearts birth by sleep which is loaded with serious heavy moments, none of which stands out, and it's less satisfying compared to Kingdom Hearts 2. Heck, for something more relevant, Hunk crying, saying that he'll save his family, has more impact because Hunk isn't bombarded with angst and is our sweet, adorable, cowardly lion. See, that's a better example of, uh, of managing your tone. For Shiro, I feel so exhausted with what the writing team has done to him, and I feel so sorry for the character because he deserves more. Comparatively, you know what you know what Garnet didn't need? More angst on top of the crap she already has gone through. Why don't we just have Sapphire be shattered while you're at it? 
please, Rebecca, don't do that because your show is already problematic as as it is. And as I said before, animation in general is still struggling with L- with good LGBT representation and has only been able to make baby steps so far upon observation. And this is the best that the Voltron team can do? Inconclusive dialogue? Shoving more undeserved misery into Shiro's life? A depressing story or even a moody and depressing season overall? And the creators wanting praise and boasting about how progressive they are? is beyond infuriating. Yeah, getting a bad version of what you want is better than not getting it at all, but that doesn't negate criticism. I'm glad that we got Power Rangers. I'm glad that we got Sailor Moon Crystal. I'm glad we got a Charmed reboot. I'm glad for Gay Shiro, but that does but the, but that's mere ex, but their mere existence does not make it immune to criticism. I'm glad that Shiro is gay. He could be just as much of an LGBT role model as Garnet is. He is like the Steve Rogers of Ultron, but that's a character thing, not a story thing. Character traits and story traits are different even if they can influence each other. Shiro being a big gay space daddy is great, but the story they decided to tell was far from great. Not horrible, but not great. The criticism is very warranted, and any good creator worth their salt will tell you that you need to you need to listen to criticism in order to grow. Yeah, half the time, it's ba- it's BS criticism most of the time, but you'll never be able to know the difference between legit criticism and bad critici- criticism unless you tackle it head on and improve so you can have something better in the future. I hope that despite the, uh, their past, the Voltron team will do better. We're not saying Shiro gets a happily ever after for its own sake, but the Voltron team for them to do better that's all that we're asking and if they if they want to contribute in representation in any meaningful way that's what they got to do sure we didn't get the gay story that we wanted a lot of people say however uh but was what we got really that good to begin with and you got a question maybe getting what we wanted would have been better not saying fans should go harass the creative team. Screw that, because we're not the fucking Star Wars fandom. However, by that very same token, the creators should reflect on this and get out a pad, take some notes, and see how they can improve by listening to some of the hailstorm of criticism. A lot, a, a lot more of this will most likely be covered in my future video about diversity and representation. However, I'm very sure I'm going to be yelled at in the comment section for this. Oh boy, uh, but uh, make no mistake, I don't hate the show. I I wouldn't be planning more videos uh, in the future for Voltron if I didn't like the show. This is probably a bad way to leave before a hiatus, huh? Well, the, well, when you think about it, not everything has to have a happy ending, I suppose. Alright, come at me, comment section. I'll see you guys later.